Welcome to RPTV Weekly News. My name is Jamelia and my co-hosts are Victoria, Jabin, and Fred. We present news that impacts on Regent Park and surrounding areas. In the episode we are presenting today, the following news for this week, July 18th to July 25th, 2022 include... Summer 2022. Regent Park Cultural Bazaar is here every Friday until September 2nd. Cabbage Town turned a parking space into Parkette to support local businesses. Toronto Aboriginal Support Services Council getting permanent home in Regent Park. Police announced 50,000 rewards for tips in Regent Park mentor Thane Murray's killing. City of Toronto accepts Ombudsman Toronto's recommendation on encampment prevention and enforcement. Inflation drives Toronto 2026 FIFA World Cup cost estimate up to $300 million. COVID-19 and vaccination update. Fourth COVID-19 vaccine now available for Ontarians over the age of 18. Vaccine clinics in the neighbourhood. Events and jobs in the Regent Park community. Summer 2022, Regent Park Cultural Bazaar is here every Friday until September 2nd. Summer 2022 is here and the vibrant Regent Park Cultural Bazaar is back in the neighbourhood at 660 Dundas Street East every Friday from June 24 to September 2nd from 5 to 9 p.m. Admission is free. You can enjoy live music, raffles, henna, multicultural food, popcorn and cotton candy, artisanal products and more. Shop locally and support artisans and designers. Cash accepted at all booths. RPTV visited the Cultural Bazaar on Friday, July 15th and interviewed local vendors and visitors. My name is Anika. I'm with uh, Regent Park Cultural Bazaar and I'm doing this henna booth plus the refreshment booth. And one of the most important things about Cultural Bazaar is that it brings everyone together and exposes us to the different diverse cultures and the multicultural um, demographic of Regent Park and it really just brings that out. And honestly, it's just a great time. You get to eat a lot of food and have a lot of fun um, listening to music because we always have a new artist who's doing their thing. And also you can get your henna done. Hi, my name is Amal and I work on the Anti-Racism Action Program. It's a project that the SDP is collaborating on and actually owns under the Regent Park Community Health Center and the Cultural Bazaar. Like This is literally diversity in action happening here. So I think we should embrace and, and, and appreciate the diversity and the intersectionality of all the good stuff that's happening here. Food, music, art, textiles. <laughs> it's a great event. Hi everyone, this is Mirang Kidwai and I am a resident of the Regent Park community where we're standing here today and behind me you can see a great celebration of all cultures where presented are different types of cuisines around the world and uh, what I really like about this uh, every Friday is that it gives you a taste of Regent Park truly because you get to just you know experience an evening full of fun, there's live music and you get to meet people from within the neighborhood. It's such a nice feeling to be around people who care for you and you can gather with them, laugh with them. It's just so nice and refreshing and I absolutely look forward to it every week. Hi, <laughs> I'm Roseanne and um, I live in Regent Park and uh, I've been here for nine years now and um, I think this is an amazing event to be happening now. Um, it brings people together after such, you know, crazy couple of years, you know. And um, I think that this, uh, this event will actually bring people together and to re-establish what Region Park's all about. And um, yeah, I, I love it, I love it. I just love being here and to be part of this and to be able to celebrate my culture, which I'm from Guyana. I'd like to celebrate my food and, and to, you know, sort of uh, introduce what all it's about, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, yes. Um, I have roti. I have paratha roti from Guyana, Guyanese style. It's the oil roti. I also have um, chicken curry over here. I also have the coconut biscuits that are quite common in Guyana. And of course, basmati rice. And uh, our black cake, which is a rum cake right here. These are made with wine, rum, and brandy. And it takes a long time to soak the fruits to make them. So I've been soaking them for like six months. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Patricia. I am a resident of Regent Park for over 20 years. And um, 
I got involved with Taste of Regent Park in 2015, 2016 around there. And since then, there was no stopping. I think events like this is really good for the community. It brings the community together and everybody gets to know each other and learn about each other's culture and food. And I think it's a great idea to come out and sample the world right here in Regent Park because we have people from all over the world living right here in Regent Park that is making food from their own countries and that we can sample anything we like from around the world. Um, so right here on this booth you can find Doubles, Trinidad Doubles. It's the number one street food in Trinidad. And then we have Kurma. It's a sweet and it's also popular in Trinidad. And we have Pilori, the number two street food in Trinidad. And this of course is jerk chicken and rice and peas. And it's part of the Caribbean. It's not really from Trinidad, but it's a Caribbean thing. Thank you guys. My name is Ines. I do, I sell cotton candy, popcorn, snow cone, empanadas, chicken, beef, and plus lemonade. It's freshly made, the empanadas. Every, when I come here, I do it, I wake up early in the morning. And I think this is important because it's, uh, it gives people opportunities for them to uh, do their, their entrepreneurs. And it's nice because it's, it's an open space where people can come and, and taste of different cultures food. Thank you. Tavistown turned a parking space into Parkette to support local businesses. For 10 weeks from July 4th to September 11th, Parliament Street in Cabbagetown is going to look a little bit more green as a new parkscape installation was erected into the delight of merchants, businesses, and the local community. The parkscape featuring trees, green space, naturalized seating on logs, and other elements of nature was erected in just 72 hours with repurposed municipal wood. It was made by Binanstock Natural Playgrounds in a collaborative effort between the Cavistown BIA and other partners including Binanstock and Toronto Centre MPP Kristen Wong Tam. This is a place-making initiative designed to support local merchants and businesses who have been impacted by the last two and a half years, Wong Tam said. The 100000 cost is funded by major partners, she added, with no money from taxpayers or the BIA. The installation elevates the experience on the street side, and the feedback has been positive, Wong Tam said. We've heard from merchants, they're seeing new people coming in, staying longer, choosing to dine in or take away and plop themselves on this naturalized seating, she said. What was once a parking space and patio space has been recreated into a natural green space with shade. Parliament Street near the installation had its speed reduced from 50 kilometers per hour to 30 kilometers per hour. It creates a natural traffic calming effect. The parkscape takes up two blocks. RPTV visited the park yet and interviewed visitors that have fallen in love with the new installation. It's an oasis. Oh wait, okay. Yeah, it's an oasis. It's a, it's like, it's, it, you know, it's you want the shade. Yeah. It just feels really comfortable mm -hmm. and uh, beautiful. And I love the trees and the it stuff. Seems like you're enjoying this stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, in fact, I had a friend that, that visited me in our town. I, Rob over here last week just so it's you know it's something that uh, should be more uh, more duplicated and replicated elsewhere in the city it also provides a space for people to mingle there are lots of a lot of everything positive I think it's very interesting we were delighted to discover it we've come back a second time now why do you enjoy it so much well, it, just, it seems like we're kind of out of nature on the side of the street, you know. I like to be outside, and uh, many coffee shops you have to be inside, even jet fuel. Right. So uh, I don't want to just bring my coffee out and stand in the sun. It's nice to have the shade here. Toronto Aboriginal Support Services Council getting permanent home in Regent Park at 660 Dundas Street East. 
The Toronto Aboriginal Support Services Council is a Toronto-based coalition of 18 Indigenous social services agencies working to address the unique challenges and opportunities facing Indigenous people in Ward 13 Toronto Centre and across our city. On July 12, 2020, TASC announced their new permanent office space in Regent Park, located at 660 Dundas Street East. This new 3,100 square feet dedicated office space will be owned and operated by TASC and will enable gathering culture, ceremonies, events, collaboration, and other community activities for years to come for the benefit of urban Indigenous communities in Toronto. The announcement focused on the funding of their new home, Daniel's partnership with TASC, as well as remarks from the Minister of Indigenous Affairs, task representatives and other friends, allies and funding partners. The Government of Canada is giving $2 million to the Toronto Aboriginal Support Service Council so it can purchase, renovate a new permanent office and community space in Regent Park after task lost its office in 2020 during the pandemic. Federal funding was administrated through the urban component of the Indigenous Community Infrastructure Fund at Indigenous Services Canada. The Daniels Corporation also contributed $300,000 towards the partial construction costs and about $94,000 to reduce the purchase price, with the City of Toronto shoveling in $650,000. Francis Sanderson, president of TAS, gave words of welcome to friends, supporters and partners that were invited to this important event and expressed excitement to unveil their new home in the heart of Toronto. Good morning and welcome to our friends, our partners and our supporters. I'm so very excited. This is a special day for TASC that has been a long time coming. We now have a permanent location. We now stand firmly on a space that is truly our own. This new office space means we have a stable, enduring home in the heart of Toronto and in the hearts of our Indigenous community members. And all this would not have been possible without the strong support of our friends and partners. Indigenous Services Canada, the City of Toronto, the Daniels Corporation, and they were all supported by the encouragement of the members of TASC, our Council. This is a pivotal, pivotal moment for TASC. We now have a unique opportunity to celebrate our vision of collaboration, friendship, and yes, Larry, unity in a strong, welcoming area of Toronto that has already shown a strong Indigenous presence. TASC can now add its name to the list of our neighbours right here. It's amazing when you take a look at the list of just how many organisations are in the area. Toronto Council Fire Friendship Centre, Anishinaabe Homes, the Ontario Aboriginal AIDS HIV Strategy, OHAS. Two-Spirited People of the First Nation, Anishinaabe Health. Misery Beak Employment and Training, Native Women's Resource Centre, Native Men's Residence, Thunder Women Healing Lodge. There is a lot of Indigenous support and there will be a, a much larger presence in the Regent Park area now. TASC's new office space will be a hub, offering shared space, community collaboration, and an opportunity to work together in unity to strengthen the ties between not just our organizations, but also the development of partnerships with Toronto at large. Following Francis, remarks from Daniels Corporation were given by Vice President of Social Impact, Hila Markiel. 
Good morning, everyone. I am Gila Omar Kale, VP of Social Impact at the Daniels Corporation. On behalf of Mitchell Cohen, our president and CEO, who isn't able to be here in person today, and all of us at the Daniels Corporation, I am honored to officially welcome Toronto Aboriginal Support Services Council home to Regent Park. Regent Park is located on the traditional territory uh, of Indigenous peoples and has been home to many individuals, families, organizations, and communities from diverse backgrounds through many generations. Our team at Daniels has had the privilege of being part of this community for over 17 years as Toronto Community Housing's development partner for phases one, two, and three of the revitalization of this neighborhood. TASC joins an incredible list of Indigenous organizations that already call Regent Park home, which Francis so kindly noted. On the Regent Park footprint includes Toronto Council Fire Native Cultural Centre, uh, Native Earth Performing Arts, and the Toronto Birth Centre, which is led by Indigenous community members. All of us at Daniels are truly excited about the inclusivity, creativity, vitality, and unity that TASC and your 18 member organizations will bring to this neighborhood as you further establish Regent Park as an important Indigenous hub in Toronto. We are also thrilled to welcome TASC to Regent Park from right here in the World Urban Pavilion, a collaborative initiative of UN Habitat, Urban Economy Forum, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, and the Daniels Corporation. The pavilion is a knowledge exchange hub to share best practices, innovation, and research in advancing urban development with a focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, in particular, SDG number 11, which is to make cities more inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. The opportunity for TASC to own a new permanent home in Regent Park will certainly contribute to making our city more inclusive, resilient, safe, and sustainable. With the pavilion as a platform, this example of community wealth building by an Indigenous not-for-profit organization can be projected locally, nationally, and internationally as a model for building safe and inclusive community spaces. In fact, one of our key principles at Daniels is to help build community wealth by promoting ownership of space by not-for-profit organizations. We go beyond stewardship to create ownership opportunities for our not-for-profit partners. Our work with the Toronto International Film Festival Group at TIFF by Lightbox and with Artscape, the Remix Project, Manifesto Community Festivals and House at our City of the Arts community in the waterfront are prime examples of this principle at work. Ownership builds equity and community wealth uh, ownership builds equity and community wealth, and we hope others, including the City of Toronto, will continue to find ways to embrace this approach. TASC will now have a permanent home from which to operate and convene, rather than being a perpetual tenant. This will add a deeper sense of belonging and s stability to your very important work. We were thrilled to meet Lindsay and the TASC team over a year ago as we collectively envisioned an Indigenous cultural hub on the waterfront at Keyside with ownership as the central principle. Although we did not achieve that opportunity, we re remained committed to using our business as a platform for truth and reconciliation and finding other opportunities to work closely with urban Indigenous communities and organizations. We are truly part proud to partner with TASC on the purchase of your new home uh, just a few doors down the hall. We did this through a reduction in the purchase price and a cash donation. We're also pleased that the Government of Canada through Indigenous Services Canada and the City of Toronto also recognize the importance of having TASC with a dedicated home, permanent and cultural appropriate, culturally appropriate space and are providing the critical support to make that happen. As developers and city builders, we are committed to continuing our journey toward truth and reconciliation by recognizing, supporting, and celebrating Indigenous peoples and continuing our work related to Recommendation 92 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Helping make this space in Regent Park attainable for task is a positive step in our truth in reconciliation work and goes hand in hand by, with building a healthy, vibrant city. 
We look forward to joining everyone here in this building in the near future when we officially open the doors of Task's new home. Congratulations and welcome home. Following Hila, MC Larry Frost welcomed Honorable Patty Hadju, Minister of Indigenous Services Canada, for special remarks. Having an important space, having a space where you can actually pull people together, do that work, do the uh, additional work that you often play in terms of providing broad information to Indigenous community members here that may be attached to their home community, that may be adrift in an urban environment that are not attached to anyone or any place, uh, that is also an especially critical role. So it's a real all hands on deck um, job that you have Francis and team and I just want to thank you and so to help continue this work and to make sure that you do have that strength of place I'm really excited to announce that Indigenous Services Canada will announce two million dollars in funding to the Toronto Aboriginal Services Society Council better known as TASC for your expansion and renovation program so thank you very much. Former City of Toronto Councillor Christine Huang Tam also welcomed Toronto Aboriginal Support Services Council to their new home and gave her first scroll as MPP. TAS lost their space, as many of you are aware, at the beginning of the pandemic, and throughout those two and a half years, they were floating very, very difficultly without space. How do you do work for a community without physical space? How do you do work for a community when you don't have space for your staff or the volunteers or even the board members to come together? And that is not necessarily easy work, but they did it with the support of 18 extraordinary organizations who are, whose logos and um, names are all represented behind me. These organizations dug deep throughout the pandemic and we know that they delivered not just services, uh, which we, we know that they did, but they did it with such heart and conviction. And so for that, we need to say thank you to the extraordinary leadership at TASC who never gave up despite things were being, things were hard. Now, I want to just say that our role at the City of Toronto, and I'm not there anymore, I'm, I'm now your member of Provincial Parliament, but the role at the City of Toronto is actually really important. As I think that over the past 12 years, Councillor Layton and I have seen that the City has also moved forward with conversations and work with the Indigenous community. And that work has also been one of growth and learning curve. Those relationships, I believe, had have deepened more than ever before. So I'm very happy to have played a small role in providing the initial funding for the down payment for TAS, which then enabled them, I believe, to then fight for the bigger check of $2 million. Our contribution was $650,000, um, $650, but it all came together to come out with this fantastic outcome. Now, one thing I'm just going to say is that I, I recognize that there are orders of government and corporations represented on this funding banner. So we see the City of Toronto, we see Indigenous services through the Government of Canada, and of course we see the Daniels Corporation. So thank you for all that Daniels does in the region, Park community, across the city and beyond. I would love to see the provincial logo, the province of Ontario, and their funding support come forward stronger than ever before for our Indigenous communities, for the Indigenous communities uh, and organizations that serve the city. And I think that that needs to be said because uh, they should never be absent when it comes to governments, community corporations coming together to serve the community. Um, I have just been elected June the 2nd, so it's pretty new. Uh, I have not delivered a scroll yet on behalf of uh, myself and uh, Queen's Park. So this is my very first MPP sc uh, scroll and I, and I wanted to make sure that I gave it to task. And uh, so Francis, uh, this is my scroll to you. I'll just read it very quickly. Uh, Kristen Wong Tam, MPP, extends congratulations to the Toronto Aboriginal Support Services Council on the successful acquisition of their new and permanent office space in Regent Park, which enables them to extend and enhance the delivery of significant services to support the Indigenous communities in Toronto Centre and beyond. And I just wanted to say thank you. I wanted to mark this myself. And Police announced $50,000 rewards for tips in Regent Park mentor, Dane Murray Skilling. The Toronto Police Service is asking for help in locating the third and final suspect in the September 21, 2021 fatal shooting of Regent Park's 27-year-old, Dane Murray. On July 7, 2022, 
Toronto Crime Stoppers had a $50,000 reward for information leading to the location and arrest of 28-year-old Jabril Elmi. Elmi is believed to be somewhere in the GTA, looting his December 13, 2021 Canada-wide arrest warrant. On Saturday, September the 18th, 2021, at 9 p.m., the Toronto Police Service responded to a call for a shooting near Regent Park in the area of Oak Street and Sumac Street in Toronto. Three victims were struck by gunfire. Two of the victims were transported to hospital, one with life-threatening injuries and the other with serious injuries. The third victim, Thane Murray, 27 years old, of Toronto, was pronounced dead at the scene. Thane was a Toronto City employee who worked at the Regent Park Community Centre. He was a well-regarded public servant and a much-loved community member. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. On Monday, December the 13th, 2021, the Toronto Police Service homicide investigators charged three individuals in this case. Two of the accused were located and arrested the same day. The only outstanding accused, Jabril Elmi is wanted by the Toronto Police Service on Canada-wide warrants for first-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. Mr. Elmi is described as being 28 years old, 5 foot 7 in height and weighing 180 pounds. He has a lazy right eye. We believe that he is still in the greater Toronto area, actively evading arrest. Again, take no action to apprehend Elmi yourself. He may be armed and dangerous. We do not need you to be a witness or testify in court. The cases against Mohammed Hassan and Jabril Elmi are ready to go to trial. We simply need your help in locating them. In some cases, however, suspects are able to evade capture. In these situations, the Toronto Police Service is privileged to work with organizations such as BOLO and Toronto Crime Stoppers which offer re rewards and take tips, ultimately, ultimately leading to the apprehension of criminals and providing some closure to victims and their families. Bolo's message is simple but effective. Be on the lookout. And today, we are here to announce that they are offering two substantial rewards of up to $50,000 for information that leads to the arrests of two individuals who are wanted for homicide offenses. If you have information, call 416-222-8477 or go to 222.tips.com. City of Toronto accepts Ombudsman Toronto's recommendations on encampment prevention and enforcement. Ombudsman Toronto releases interim report and recommendations. Investigation into the city's processes for clearing encampments 2021. The City of Toronto accepts the Ombudsman's recommendations and remains committed to strengthening its housing first approach to street encampment outreach and providing wraparound client-centered case management supports to people living outdoors constructively and in a non-confrontational way. I would say that we have learned in terms of how we can most effectively and compassionately care for people who are experiencing homelessness every day that's gone by. And that some of the experiences we had after the incidents the Ombudsman was looking into uh, have reflected our learning as to how we can work hard so as to clear encampments, which we've successfully done, fairly large ones out of fairly large parks, uh, without ever having the police being involved at all. Uh, we just have the hard work of a lot of nonprofit uh, uh, partners, a lot of people working together from every aspect of uh, city government to support these residents to find uh, safe indoor housing uh, for them. But you know, I will say this, there does come a time where the principle, the fundamental principle that says that uh, public parks are not proper places for encampments, they're not safe, they're not legal, and they're not healthy, that that principle has to be upheld. And so while we will continue to make uh, even more efforts uh, as uh, following on the recommendations of the Ombudsman uh, to do this better and, and in a way that is less disruptive and that is uh, even more compassionate, um, we will uh, make sure that the parks are available for use by everyone and that we make sure we have more and more projects like this because this is the kind of place that someone experiencing homelessness is going to get back on their feet, get their lives back together and have a platform uh, from which they can launch uh, a more successful uh, future for themselves than an encampment in a public park. Inflation drives Toronto 2026 FIFA World Cup cost estimate up to $300 million. 
The estimated cost to taxpayers for Toronto to host several 2026 FIFA World Cup games has risen to about $300 million, or at least $60 million per expected game. Toronto City staff says the estimate has increased about $10 million due to recent escalation in inflation rates. The cost of hosting the matches now approaches to the net GDP benefit to the city, pegged at $307 million and 3,300 direct new jobs. COVID-19 and vaccination update. Fourth COVID-19 vaccine now available for Ontarians over the age of 18. Ontario announced four doses of the COVID-19 vaccine are now available to adults over the age of 18. Dr. Kieran Moore said Wednesday, July 13th, that adults who had their first boosters over five months ago will be able to book a fourth shot or second booster starting last Thursday. Dr. Moore noted that people who don't have underlying health conditions could choose to wait for the fall when vaccines specifically targeting the Omicron variant may become available. Millions of Ontarians have not received all their recommended vaccinations. Five million Ontarians have yet to receive their first booster and over 1.6 million Ontarians at the highest risk for severe outcomes have not received their second. These individuals are strongly encouraged to do so as soon as possible to protect themselves from severe illness and hospitalization, especially for those that are over 60 years of age. While my call for arms remains the loudest for the most vulnerable in our communities, we've made the decision to expand the eligibility for second boosters to include Ontarians aged from 18 to 59 years of age. Beginning July 14th, Individuals in, in this age group may choose to get a second booster if it has been five months since receiving the previous booster dose and at least three months after any COVID-19 infection. Vaccine clinics in the neighborhood. And now with vaccination clinics in the neighborhood. Our Region Park vaccination clinic is open on Tuesday from 3 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. at 40 Oak. Both Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are available. For more information, please visit regionparkchc.org slash COVID-19 clinic. The Region Park Community Health Center 465 Dundas Street East has a COVID-19 vaccine clinic open on Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. The 519 clinic at 519 Church Street has the following dates in July for COVID-19 and monkeypox vaccines, July 20th and July 27th from 2.45 p.m. to 6 p.m. Events and jobs in Region Park community. And now for amazing events coming to the neighborhood. Region Park Film Festival Under the Stars is returning to the park this summer. Join a free outdoor screening every Wednesday at Region Park from July 13th to July 27th. Make sure you don't miss the block party on July 27th before the film. Live performances to breakdancing lessons, we've made sure to include something for everyone. Mental Health Matters. Calling all Regent Park youth ages 15 to 25. See a therapist for free. $225 honorarium and free halal dinners at every session. Every Friday from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m starting July at Daniel Spectrum, third floor. Limited spots available. For more information, please contact Mental Health Matters 341 at gmail.com. Daniel's Home Ownership Workshops will be taking place on Thursday, July 28, 2022 at 6 p.m. and Saturday, August 13, 2022 at 11 a.m. Where? At the World Urban Pavilion in Regent Park, powered by Daniel's 660 Dundas Street East, level three. You will learn what you need to know about purchasing your new home, including everything from closing costs to property taxes, mortgage commitments, and all the intricacies of the home buying process. To register for a workshop, call the number below to, and ask to speak to a Daniel Sales representative. Healing is One, CSI, Second Harvest, and Central of Learning and Development brings you free meals for Regent Park youth all summer long, each week this summer until August 26th. 
food and activities kits for kids will be available at the Daniel Spectrum in the CSI Community Living Room. Participation is free and open to all youths in Regent Park, ages 5 to 19, on a first come, first serve basics. Sign up at the link below. And finally, Taste of Regent Park is here every Wednesday until September 21st, 2022, from 5 p.m. to sunset. Come and join to the weekly market featuring talented local artisans, community organizations, food vendors, and entertainers at the big park. RPTV visited the inaugural day of Taste of Region Park on Wednesday, July 6th. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Mafra. I am the event and volunteer coordinator for Taste of Region Park uh, from Fred Victor. This event is called Taste of Region Park. And uh, because of COVID, uh, we've been uh, doing it outside at uh, our building, uh, 40 Oak. But now is an opportunity for the community to come back together and really enjoy the food, enjoy the music, uh, do some shopping. And uh, we are proud to bring it back. And our sponsor for this year and many years to come is uh, Daniel's Corporation, so we couldn't do it without them. So they are the sponsors uh, for Taste of Region Park these years. Uh, so this is actually how the community is supposed to come out, enjoy themselves, create social inclusion, social cohesion, and really enjoy the music. So this is a community festival, and uh, we are happy that it's back. And now we'll have Amelia with Jobs in the Neighborhood. And now for Jobs in Region Park. Toronto elections began accepting application for more than 15,000 temporary paid positions to help deliver the 2022 municipal elections. This year, election day is Monday, October 24th. Available positions include managing deputy returning officers, ballot officers, tabulator officers, and customer service officers. Anyone who is at least 18 years of age and legally eligible to work in Canada is encouraged to apply for a position through the Toronto Elections job webpage. Successful applicants who work the election will hone their skills in customer service, problem solving, leadership, and teamwork while learning about how to run a fair and accessible election. Best efforts will be made to place applicants in their preferred position at a voting location closest to their identified home address. More information about the Toronto Municipal Election is available on the Toronto Elections webpage. Do you want to pursue a career in hospitality? Dixon Hall, Fred Victor, and George Brown College is inviting you to join an eight-week training program on food work and hosp hospitality entrepreneurship with industry's best chefs and instructors. Start date is September 19, 2022. For more information, you can contact the email below or call 416-956-4949. And that's all for today's show. My name is Jamelia, and my co-hosts are Fred, Victoria, and Jabin. We also like to thank our team of researchers that contributed for this week's show. And from our studios at Focus Media Arts Center, thanks for watching and see you next week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you never miss out on any of our content. If you'd also like more, you can find us on our other social media platforms. And if you want even more, you can look at our website. Thank you.